This video is going to look at the aspect of glucose homeostasis, um, basically what happens between meals. So what happens to the blood glucose between meals? It is therefore going to focus on glucagon, which is that hormone that acts in low levels of blood glucose. Okay, so generally speaking, between meals, um, the glucose level is going to fall. The main reason for this is that it is simply being used up or insulin has caused the glucose to be absorbed by brain, brain cells, muscle cells, fat cells. Okay, um, so what happens is that glucagon is triggered, its release is triggered um, from those alpha cells in the islets of Langerhan um, and the release of glucagon it binds to those um, receptors that are in the liver. Remember that the glucagon receptors are generally only found in the liver, whereas insulin receptors are found in many different types of cells. So um, the binding of the, the glucagon to the receptors stimulates um, the release of glucose from the liver where it is being stored, um, and it's being stored as glycogen. So there's a couple of steps that have to happen before the glucose can actually be released. So here's just a summary picture showing what happens, um, basically where we get our glucose from between meals, remembering that the brain is very susceptible to reducing levels of glucose, and so the, the level of glucose must be maintained at that sort of 4 to 7 millimolar. So if we have a low blood glucose, um, so this could either be that when we're not eating, so it's between meals, or it could actually be during a period of exercise where our muscles in particular are using up a lot of that glucose um, to carry out respiration. This might deplete the sources that our body has already. So the islet cells, the alpha cells, um, detect this with the receptors, the control center acts, it produces the hormone of glucagon. Glucagon goes and acts on the liver, and notice that our little purple arrow here is only acting on the liver. It is not acting on any other tissues, just the liver. The liver will undergo a process or a reaction that I'll show you in a second that causes the release of glucose back into the bloodstream. The glucose then travels to the brain, central nervous system, to immune cells and red blood cells, um, and to the muscles and fat as well, so that we can use this glucose to, to carry out respiration. Okay, so what actually happens after glucagon is released and it goes along to the liver, to the glucagon receptors. Um, once again, we've got this little star and some arrows, which could translate as something magic happens, but really it's just a series of events that stimulate this enzyme. And oh look, you know it's an enzyme because it ends in A's. So this is an enzyme glycogen phosphorylase. Um, that means that the glycogen, which you can see here, is actually just a chain of glucose molecules. So this glycogen phosphorylase um, brings about the separation or the breakdown of the, this glycogen ch chain, transforms the glycogen into glucose, and then the glucose can therefore be released. Just to show you the, um, the opposite reaction that's occurring, so this is um, obviously not involved in... Um, glucose release between meals, but this is going back to after meals. Um, so here we have insulin, and the insulin acts upon the insulin receptor that is also in the liver. Once again, something magic happens down here, but obviously it's going to be a different something magic that happens. And instead, we now get this enzyme called glycogen synthase um, being activated, and this allows glucose to then be um, transformed into this glycogen, this form of, of a multi-chained glucose chain called glycogen. And this is how this excess glucose will be stored in the liver. So this is just what we've been talking about previously. It's talking about both um, how insulin and how glucagon um, transform this kind of the balance of glucose to glycogen and back from glycogen to glucose. So insulin's binding to this insulin receptor, activates signaling pathways, otherwise known as something magic happens, um, and we have this enzyme called glycogen synthase, which makes glycogen. So polymers is just referring to the idea that it's a multi-glucose chain molecule. Um, opposite to that, when glucagon binds to the glucagon receptor in the liver, we have another different signaling pathway. That means we get a different enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase being generated, and that is going to break down the um, glycogen back into glucose molecules so that they can be released from the liver.
Um, this is not required, but it's quite interesting to note that um, in a fight or flight response, so that's a response where you get this big surge of adrenaline happening, we actually have like a backup system. So it's kind of like an emergency glucose resuscitation system. And what happens is that adrenaline, in, the, in this case of low blood glucose, um, is able to act um, in place of glucagon and it actually stimulates this massive big release of glucose um, that's going to go off to the brain and other cells and muscles and fat and things like that. So this is quite important um, if you need to suddenly run somewhere really fast or if you need to have an adrenaline surge to try to fight off that saber-toothed tiger that is attacking you. Um, and you, you're obviously not going to be eating to get that glucose. And so adrenaline just helps um, sort of exaggerate this response and you get a lot of glucose being released. But obviously that's going to drain your system afterwards. And so often after these big adrenaline surges that you can get, you can end up feeling really kind of exhausted and depleted um, in part due to this massive big release of glucose. This is just showing what happens when we kind of go beyond um, the liver being able to release glucose. So we know that the liver has about a two to three day storage of glycogen that can be released into glucose. But what happens if you go beyond that? What happens if you don't take any food in and your liver is then depleted of all of its glycogen stores? Um, the liver is quite clever and it can actually generate um glucose through um, basically by taking amino acids and fats and undergoing this process called gluconeogenesis. You don't need to know much detail about this. Um, it's interesting to see the name though, gluco, glucose, neo means new and genesis is creation. So it's just the creation of new glucose molecules using amino acids and fats. The glucose is then released um, into the arteries and it can then um, tra travel to the different cells that we need, so brain, immune cells, and muscles, and fat, and things like that. Okay, the quiz questions for this part of um, glucose homeostasis. Once again, I'll read through them quickly. You guys can pause the video and write down your answers, and then we'll run through the answers together. So first one, how are glucose levels maintained between meals or, or during exercise? Basically, whenever we are not um, consuming food, not directly after food. Um, how is glucose converted to glycogen? And then back again, how is glycogen converted to glucose in the liver? Thirdly, what happens to our blood glucose levels during starvation? How do we maintain that glucose? And lastly, what happens during a fight or a flight response? All right, write your answers down now. Okay, running through these answers together quickly now. So um, basically the steps are between meals or during exercise, glucagon is stimulated by the presence of low blood glucose, and this will be detected and secreted by the alpha cells in the islets of Langerhan. Um, this then goes on to act on the glucagon receptors on the liver. The liver will convert glycogen to glucose, and then that can be released back into the blood. That will generally bring about an increase in the blood glucose between meals. Next question, um, the conversion of glucose to glycogen and vice versa. So glucose to glycogen, it is um, involves this enzyme called glycogen synthase, and this will be stimulated by the presence of insulin acting on the insulin receptor in the liver. And secondly, glycogen back to glucose is carried out by this enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase. And alternatively, or opposite to previous, this will be um, stimulated by the presence of glucagon coming along and acting on the glucagon receptor on, in the liver. So during starvation, um, our bodies are able to use amino acids and fats to generate new, molecule, new molecules of glucose in this process called gluconeogenesis. And finally, in a fight or flight response, we actually get this big surge of adrenaline. And adrenaline is this backup system that can also stimulate a big release of glucose from the liver.